Droners, welcome to this week's edition of Droner News, and it is going to be fly, haha, -ha, I like that. Either way, we have police drones, drones falling from the skies and hitting things, and dinosaurs and drones. So, let's get in. All right, coming in number one. All right, I may have lied a little bit about police drones, but what it is is actually police doing responsible things with drones, which is awesome. Pretty much in Ohio, they are putting, they want to put checks and balances on how police can use and when they can use drones, and they introduced a bill to their Congress to be able to figure out like to say that drones have to get warrants, or the police have to get warrants to use the drones, um, which is a really big deal. It's getting bipartisan support because it just makes sense. You know, like if you have weaponized drones or even surveillance drones, you know, I, I personally believe like if you're going to be watching people and doing things like that, you should have a warrant for that. You need a warrant to be able to enter somebody's house. You need a warrant to be able to even open somebody's glo locked glove compartment. You should get a warrant to be able to do some stuff to people with drones. So that's what Ohio's doing. It's looking good. Check it out. All right, coming in number two, we have Amazon Prime doing its first domestic drone delivery. Yeah, we actually are making this happen. And Amazon's even saying they did it in partnership with the FAA, which is a really big deal because the FAA has been really strict about anybody doing drone deliveries. Now, there is a caveat. I mean, it was just literally, it was at the Mars conference, which is pretty much like, you know, technology, robotics, and space exploration. And it was outside, the sun was blazing, it was really hot, and the drone delivered four bottles of sunscreen which to me is a really good example of the kind of things that would be really cool to have happen with drone delivery. Like, oh man, I wish I had some sunscreen right now, which I would never do with my melanin-infused skin. But some people may do that and, but, oh wow, look at that, a drone dropped it off in a designated Amazon dropping zone or something. I don't know. Either way, really cool. I hope that the FAA and Amazon can figure it out so that we can see drones flying everywhere in a way that it's safe and delivering cool stuff. Coming at number three, drones and dinosaurs. All right, I mean, I, really, I just like saying that. But in Australia, these uh, researchers are using drones to be able to help map out dinosaur stuff. So, you know, like, there still are, like, preserved dinosaur prints and, like, fossils and all kind of stuff and undisturbed sites all over the world. And these people are like, oh, man, let's see them, but we don't want to disturb it. So they're like, well, we can just send a drone in there and get pictures. We can analyze the pictures, learn a lot about, learn a lot about dinosaurs. Everybody wins. Um, they're doing 3D models of this, and it's also like a double win because, like I said before, they don't have to disturb the area. So the researchers are super happy because they get to be lazy and sit at home and watch somebody else fly a drone, give them their 3D models of the areas, and then they can study the 3D models, and they don't even have to go anywhere. So it's a win for everybody, and especially for dinosaurs. Coming to number four is a pet sitter drone patent. So like drone sitters for dogs. You know, like a person that watches your dog and stuff and cats. Um, it's pretty cool. IBM has actually just set out a patent to be able to have drones be in your house to be able to watch, monitor, and reward as well as like, you know, stir, like what's the word? Discipline your animals, which is kind of scary that you have a drone that can discipline your animal. But either way, really cool because they're saying that when you're at home, then you'll have, be able to do like the nanny camera, be able to watch it. And if it's like, oh, it needs to be let out, the drone will let it out. If it needs some food, cool. If it needs to be played with, it'll play with them, like throw stuff. And if it's doing something it shouldn't do, then it'll make some kind of noise or do something that'll be like, nah, you ain't supposed to do that. It might be a replay of your voice when you're mad. Either way, really cool, especially for people who are dog owners who are just like, yo, I can't leave my dog for alone for more than three hours. Now they may be able to because they have a drone to take care of them. And coming in at number five, last but not least, is the testing of falling drones. Now, if you've been watching the Droner News before, you'll, te you'll know that the Virginia Tech was doing testing of drones where they were flying drones in the, the dummies, the test dummies' faces, to be able to determine how dangerous drones really are. And, you know, I actually thought while I was reporting that one that I was like, that's kind of weird because normally I don't feel like that's the way that a drone would hit you. The way a drone's going to hit you is it's going to fall on your head. It's not going to run into you. Like, most drone operators are good enough to not run it into your face because they're normally higher than five and a half feet or however how tall people are. But mechanical and aerospace engineers at Syracuse University, his name is Mark Glazer, has been doing drone tests to be able to drop drones from heights onto people's heads, which I think is the best way to test for safety because that's how a drone's gonna hit you. So they're doing it, it's really like they're doing ranges from two, uh, 20 to 50 feet. I think they should do it higher. So the biggest thing that they're finding in these drones falling is that the impact of how the drone hits the ground or hits the object is almost as important as how high it is from the air. So for example, if there's like the feet of the drone all hit it, then it spreads out the impact and it's not so bad, but if only a blade or a foot hits the ground first at a single point of impact, then it can be devastating. So I guess this is really influencing how drones can fall without being able to, you know, how they fall when they lose power and influencing the drone developers and how they make drones so that they fall in the right way. All right, Droners, thank you so much for checking out this Droner News. And if you want to see more Droner News, bam, there it is. Or if you want to see the dopest video ever for an intro to a drone show, 
I think that's it. And as always, make sure that you support us by subscribing because that's what allows us to do the thing and check out our Patreon page. And as always, make sure you stay fly.